Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy. welcome back, and in today's video we're going to go through my PC build, all that it has, the cost, the many issues that I've had, and I'm currently having all of it, but a couple things before we jump in. Number one, a huge shout out to Ebontist, he helped me decide what parts to put in the PC, he walked me through it all, and then on build night, he video chatted with me for like three to four hours. I would grab my phone and show him what I was working on, give him insight, he had schematics up on his end, he was like the guy in movies with the earpiece in his ear, just kind of like Mission Impossible. It was invaluable, so please, he's a great Destiny content creator, check him out. His link's gonna be down below, and I will also pin it in the comment section. But another thing, I wanna be very clear, I'm gonna walk you through this. I get a lot of these comments, I get it, and I also get a lot of, we lost another console player to PC, or it was nice knowing you, cool guy, things like that. If you strictly wanna know about the PC build, I have that time on the screen, you can jump to it, but next, I'm gonna fully explain the purpose of this PC. That way, there's no more comments like that. I will be playing console as my main. Here's the deal, I started creating content using my Xbox. I found an ancient computer, I used that for two months, but I wanted to further my content creation. In 2015, I went to Office Max and I bought this off the shelf. It was almost basically the same price as I paid for my computer right now, but I bought that computer to create content. I bought it because I got the push from you guys. I've had this computer since then, I've had a lot of issues, and we'll talk about them shortly, but at GuardianCon, we had Cami, Drew Sides, Ebontis, Tomo, they all encouraged me to build a PC. And that's not really coming from Destiny, that's coming from a content creation standpoint, because I was telling them the issues that I had. We talked about cross saves coming, shadow keeps coming, I'm personally on a quest for 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, you guys rock, so the PC I currently have is kind of holding me back. With all of this coming up, it's a perfect time, so I sat down with my wife, we had money saved, so I did it. You need to understand though, the PC that we're talking about today is for content creation, to be able to stream. My other one couldn't hold frames, it wouldn't be able to stream, and I love streaming. So here's the deal with Destiny and my content moving forward, Cross Save does a couple things. I'm able to go on PS4 and play with some other content creators, as an example, Fallout and I will be streaming together, and on the PC side I can go over there and play with Cami, Drew, Ebontis, I miss that. Because with Cami and Drew, I played with them daily on Xbox for over a year. And since Destiny 2's launched, I haven't played with them, and I miss that. The only game I've played with them since Destiny 2 launched was the one at Guardian Con. I've always been a console player and Xbox player. I've never played a PC game in my life except for Oregon Trail. But you need to know, as a console player, that's just all I've ever known. All I've ever gamed with, and I've gamed with the same 8 people for 10 years. None of them have a PC. I play with them every day, and those people are my family. So when I tell you that I'm not going to switch in main to PC, I'm serious. The frames are nice, and I can play it whenever I want, it's there, whatever. But as far as Destiny, I will be playing on Xbox, I will switch to PS4 more often than ever, and every now and again I'm going to jump on PC to play with Kami, Drew Pontus, and others. That's what it's about, playing with your friends. And all day-to-day -day operation recordings are going to be from console, and now that I have PC, one of the main reasons is to be able to talk about PC intelligently. It's one of the things I've wanted to do with my channel for a long time. And with cross save, I can get my gameplay and then jump on PC with the same weapon, same setup, same loadout, and talk about it with you guys. I think that should sound exciting. And you'll see, as the months come on, content's going to be console focused, and when I'm comfortable with mouse and keyboard, a PC section will be added to reviews and talking points. But that's just Destiny. The whole reason for this computer was to be able to expedite content creation. And here's a great example. This new computer cold boots in about 5 seconds. I had to get licenses from Adobe for my old computer to be able to transfer them to my new one. So I had both computers up, my old computer, it's up and running, I press the Adobe icon and when you press it a box goes on the screen, it initializes it and then it loads the program. Right as I pressed it, I literally turned on my new computer from a cold boot, logged into it, opened Adobe and Adobe opened in 2 seconds and I was waiting for the license transfer key. Meanwhile, on my old computer, it hadn't loaded the program yet and then proceeded to take 3 to 5 more minutes. That's the level that we're at here with content creation, guys. And here's another example. When I record a 10-minute gameplay with my Elgato on my old computer, it saves, renders the file in the background, as it always does, and it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to render that 10-minute video, and that's a long time. Meaning that if I play back-to-back -back games that have great games, and I want to record the second game after the one that I'm recording right now, what will happen is it's going to start having two files kind of rendering at the same time, because the computer can't keep up with it. And what always ends up happening is that one of those two games will get file corrupted. There'll be bad audio, skipped frames, and the entire gameplay is useless. Compared to my new computer, when I record a 10 minute game, it renders the entire game in about 45 seconds. It can then be inserted into an editor, whatever, and that's not to mention constant crashes while editing. Waiting for clips to render within the programs, things like that. That Revoker video that you guys saw the other day, that was about 14 minutes, I did the commentary, edited the whole thing, and rendered it in all of about 4 hours. My old computer, easily that same video, would have taken over 10, I kid you not. 
So when I tell you that the PC is made for content creation, I'm serious. And when I tell you that I'm going to play on Xbox and PS4 mostly, I'm serious. Destiny on PC is kind of viewed as the cherry on top. It really is. It will get played, but not as much as everyone thinks. The deciding factor would ultimately be if the majority of those eight friends I talked about earlier got PCs. And if that was the case, then yeah, I would jump on PC a lot more. But with cross-save in general, there's no reason not to jump around from time to time anyway. And keep in mind that if I'm playing PC one night, get a really good gameplay, and have some talking points for tip purposes or something like that, it's going to make it on the channel, obviously. But let's get into the build. I'm going to go over each item, give the price, then talk about the setup as a first-time builder. And after all that, I do have a total build cost with what I have. We saw my old computer earlier, the little beast that it is. I do have some screenshots, videos for you as we go through all this. Right here is my previous setup. I've gamed next to my wife for the past uh, so many years. It's like countless. We built this so we can play together. The two center tower holds two PlayStations, two Xboxes. On the left, obviously, is mine for content creation. And with this setup, it can't even fit a mouse and keyboard. So the first thing was to get a new desk. I got an L-shaped desk. It's nothing special. It's all I need. It was 100 bucks. Got it off of Amazon, nothing fancy. It's strictly for function. It has a 70-inch space from left to right. It holds my computers and monitors. The bottom area, I have two sections for my consoles. It's really perfect. It works out great. Now for the PC parts that I got, I did have some issues. Sometimes it took three or four days to get one item because most of all of this has come out within the last 30 days or so. It's been sold out everywhere, the graphics card, motherboard, processor. I found an awesome website called nowinstock.net and basically you pick an item such as a 2070 Super GPU and it tracks all the stores that have it. It updates every five minutes of the full stock, everything online from Best Buy to Newegg. And with it updating every five minutes, you can even set an alarm for when an item becomes in stock. And when they come in stock, they sell out within 5-10 to 10 minutes or less. They're very hard to get. And also, the website works good for everything I was finding out. Hard to find things like Amiibos and Funko. Anything that's hard to get, like especially around Christmas time, keep this website in mind as a pro tip. Really good for getting hard to get items. I end up getting my graphics card and motherboard through this site. The case that I have is an NZXT H700. It retails for $150. I got it for $100 on Prime Day. It's a mid-tower. I got it in white because I really like the look. The motherboard is an Asus Tough Gaming X570. Now the 570 are the new boards for these new Ryzen's and this thing had a lot of issues and we'll talk about that later. It was $199. It has Wi-Fi and that's important, not because the Wi-Fi itself, but just the fact that it has Wi-Fi because we had a lot of issues. The processor is the new Ryzen 9 3900X, 12 cores, and I'm so glad that I went with it compared to an i9 Intel. I did a lot of research, watched a lot of videos between these processors, and if you haven't researched it, it's all amazing. The i9 is slightly, I mean slightly better for gaming, like say if a game's getting 130 frames on the i9, it's gonna get 125 on the Ryzen 9. But with the cores and content creation for what I need, it allows me to be more free and do a lot more, and I also have really good gaming speeds, and in some games the Ryzen 9 outperforms it, like they're very on level, but with everything that this Ryzen 9 has, it's just a lot better from all the research and what I'm finding as I'm using it. And with taxes, that CPU was 560 bucks. For the graphics card, I got a Gigabyte Geoforce RTX 2070 Super. These are the new cards, the Super cars. Again, it's a pain to get. It's a three fan system. I wanted that for cooling. It was 550 bucks. My RAM is Corsair. It's RGB 16 Gigabyte DDR4 3600 C18. And I'm going to add on more RAM later, but I just needed this as a baseline to get everything going. These were 149 The SSD is a Samsung 970 EVO Plus, 500 gigabytes. It's M.2 Eternal. Again, I will be adding on to this later. I just needed to get baseline to get everything going. This was 109 My cooler, one of my favorite parts of the build, and yes, I know, the fan's on backwards. Thank you, Twitter fam. We learned as we went. I was looking at water-cooled initially, and Ibanta was like, dude, you need to check out Noctua. These are made in Austria and have really high marks from everyone in reviews. Crazy good cooler. And Ibanez goes, they're great, but people think that they're ugly. They're a little big, but they really don't like the colors. So I looked at this thing and I go, dude, they run cool guy colors. It's literally on brand. It's absolutely perfect. This was 90 bucks. And we'll talk about later the benchmark of how much work this thing puts in. We have a 750 watt Corsair power supply. It was 100 bucks. I got it on Prime Day. It's regularly 200. It was a great deal. We do have some extracurricular things. I got the Elgato 4K, the internal one. It was $250 because I got it refurbished from Amazon. I haven't had any issues with it, and I saved some money. And it's also nice that, again, it's directly in the system. My old card was outside, and since this one's eternal, everything is, like, 100% faster. It's great. I got a starter keyboard, a K55 Corsair on Prime Day. It came with a mouse. The keyboard was $49. Bucks. I don't need anything special right now. I plan to get another one once I'm comfortable with using mouse and keyboard. No reason to go crazy until I understand it all. Got a large Corsair mouse pad, it was 15 bucks, and I ended up getting a glorious Model O mouse. This was 50 bucks. They're lightweight. I've never PC gamed in my entire life, but I adore this thing. It feels really good. 
For the monitor, I got an Acer HG270HU. This is a 2560 by 1440. It's a 2K monitor. I got it on Prime Day for 280, I believe. It retails for 369. Even though this video is in 1080p, this thing is gorgeous and you guys won't see the 2K part, but it's stunning. I have a regular 1080p Asus monitor that I've always had and I will be upgrading that because I'm looking for the new LG that's coming out soon. They claim it to be the world's first IPS 2K 144Hz monitor, which is important for content creation because this monitor right here, this Acer is a TN panel, means it's kind of designed for refresh rate, which is good for gaming, but not really good for content creation. So the IPS I'll be getting later on for content creation. So let's get into the build process. If I can do it, you can do it. I had major help from Ebontis, but through YouTube videos and more, you can do it as well. Brought out the motherboard, placed the chip in, put on some thermal paste, stuck on the cooler. It's a very large cooler, and again, the, originally the fans were put on backwards, but we figured it out. Then we put things on the board, added the RAM, the SSD. It's really like Legos for adults. That's what everyone describes it as, and that's exactly what it is. I legit enjoyed all of this. We placed in the Elgato and the graphics card, and yeah, we're talking about this lightly, but again, this entire process took four or five hours. The wiring from the power supply took like an hour alone. My wife helped out a lot because she knows electrical well with her engineering background. And then he bought us on the other hand had schematics. But here's where we started having problems. We put it all together and you want it to run. It did. However, once we got into the BIOS, we wanted to see how everything was running. You want to install Windows. Well, it wouldn't load Windows and we kept getting an error that Windows had an error. It would try to restart. It looped. It would start up again. Try to load Windows. Error. Blue screen. Do it all over again. Now the BIOS version I had was, again, less than a month old. It already had a new one. I talked with Asus, they recommended trying the new BIOS. And that was a whole different issue formatting to get that thing going, but we got it in there. But the same thing, no Windows. And you have to think, I know next to nothing about computers and am learning as I'm going. And I went to bed, woke up the next day, did some research, nothing for six hours, tried different things, loading in Windows, nothing. But through looking through deep Reddit posts, and I'm talking deep Reddit, you know, the ones that have one post, one reply from two weeks ago. I tried something that someone suggested, disabling Wi-Fi from the BIOS. I disabled Wi-Fi and amazingly, Windows shot right up and we're ready to go. I had this thing's box ready, had an appointment with the computer shop, was going to pay them to troubleshoot so they can install Windows on it, but it's something as simple and almost non-relative as turning Wi-Fi off that was holding all this back. All this stuff is 30 days old and it's gonna have some bugs, but that was crazy to me. Then booted up, partitioned the SSD, hours of downloading software, getting my old game caps on there, Elgato software, all the Adobe software, Audacity, then fine tuning each one of those. It took a lot of time. And now we're here. I do have some driver updates, but it's stable. I did benchmark the Ryzen 9 and the whole goal was to see how much of a load it could take. The program does a very heavy render on the computer. And when you do that, you watch all 12 cores light up. It was really cool to watch. I did this back to back to back several times, like 15, 20 times. And the whole goal was to see the CPU temp to make sure the thermal paste had a good contact to see how much it can take. And again, after 20 straight times, giving it zero breathing room rendering, it's stopping rendering again. The CPU temp never marked above 70 C and it's rated for 95 C. So it didn't even get close. That's a really good thing. Very happy about that. That's that cooler putting in all that work. That thing's bad, y'all. I did do a graphics card benchmark and maybe some of you PC guys can help me out. I had a couple people tell me that this is very good. I did a benchmark at 2K, high settings, non ultra. And I'm gonna game in 1080p anyway. It did a max of 324 frames and had a steady of 163. And that looks pretty good. I want you guys to let me know. The actual score was 4123. I have no idea what that means, but people were telling me that that was good. All in all with my full setup here, we have a couple monitors. 2K PC on the left, 1080 on the right. We have a last word watching over everything. We have my Yeti mic with my boom from Rode. I do have a 4K Brio webcam I've had for two years, and this is literally the first time I've ever used it because my computer couldn't run it. I got a headset stand that was like 30 bucks off Amazon. It's one of the best decisions I've ever made. It has a USB charging port for my phone, and it helps when I get up because I stand up, place it right here on top of my PC, and move on. My cable management is decent. I'm going in between a display port and an HDMI. I, all I've ever known is HDMI, and everyone tells me to go display port. And for an open area, the management is decent. I'm not done with it. This is just kind of where we are right now. Overall, I'm currently happy. And you know inside the case, that cool guy brand's in there. It was a really fun experience, but just for the computer, the overall build cost, we have the case, the processor, the motherboard, graphics card, RAM, SSD, the cooling, power supply, Windows. And you have to think some of this didn't have shipping or tax. Either it be through Newegg or Amazon, or I got it on Prime Day, it was a little bit cheaper. But overall, this computer was $2,050. I have some power right here, and to all of you out there that are thinking about buying a computer at some point, I was going to buy this computer right here on Amazon. It's a pre-built. 
i9, it's got a regular 270, it's got a one terabyte SSD. It was for 1,849 bucks. I was ready to pay that, it was in my cart, but I wanted to wait until Prime Day to see if this computer got lower, and it did, it went to 1,600. But here's the deal, these new AMD chips came out and a lot of people were saying to go that route through their research and what they found. Tomo from Earth, a really cool dude, Guardian Con met, became friends. He was kind of telling me what this Ryzen 9 can do. And he said, dude, don't buy a pre-built, do your research, build your computer, it's gonna be a better experience. And I'm so glad that I did that. And for a couple hundred dollars more of what I was going to pay initially, I got a way better system. And on these pre-builds, the big highlights are in there, right? Like the i9, it had the 2070 graphics card, but everything else is on the low end. Like the water cooler, it got bad reviews. The speeds of the RAM, the SSD were very base level or cheap or low. I got a way faster, way more powerful system since I built mine, and I'm glad that I did that. And then I had the overall experience of knowing the inside and out of it, like it's really cool to me. And for the extracurricular things for content, building my office setup here, the desk, the monitor, mouse, keyboard, mouse pad, the Elgato 4K, that was 765 total. So for everything, this total setup was $2,815. And then now comes the stress for paying all this back off. I love you guys. But if there's anything you would like to know, let's talk about it in the comment section or if there's anything that I missed. Again, subscribe to Ebontis, the dude's solid. Thank you for watching. Thank you for support. You're the reason why I did this. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.